Hi there. Welcome to the Schwoben's Nest. My name is Sandra and I have my top 10 spring DIYs for you, starting with number 10. This is a little wooden crate that I had for Christmas and I decided, you know what, I didn't like it the way it was, so I'm painting it brown first. I filled in the little crack there with a wood shim and now I'm going to also fill in the bottom because I do want to put some florals in here and I don't want any moss or anything like that to fall out. So I'm just going to hot glue those in and then I'll be ready to paint. I gave it two coats of white chalk paint inside and out and now I'm going to use some rough grit scan paper. I think this is a 60 grit and just go all around the edges and the cracks everywhere where I want some of that brown to show through. Using my Cricut Joy, I'm cutting out a stencil and here I'm just weeding out all of the small little tiny pieces. This will be available as a free printable on my website, which is down in my description box. I'm going to apply the stencil onto the crate. I cut it in three pieces so it would be really easy to fit in the right spots. And then I'm going to take some gray chalk paint and stencil all of it in using a makeup sponge. As I was peeling the stencil off, I did end up pulling up a little bit of the paint, especially down at the bottom. There's a huge chunk there, but that's okay. I want things to be distressed. So I'm just gonna take my weeding tool here and pick off some of the paint and make some more distressed marks similar to that one. I lined the sides of the box with some burlap so it would stick out over the top and I also then just added a box into the middle of it, some styrofoam and I'm going to poke down some tiny little crocus flowers for a beautiful spring arrangement. This next DIY is using a scrap piece of sign from the Dollar Tree. I cut it out into a house shape and now I'm going to add a couple of large tumbling tower blocks to the back. Then I'm going to continue with some more blocks and build a box behind the house. Here I'm using a small glue bottle to trace a circle that I'm going to cut out again using just my utility knife to create a hole for the birdhouse. The way I did this was just slice an X into the hole and then I worked on the smaller pieces just gradually chipping away until I got the hole that I needed. Then I took a little bit of sandpaper and just smoothed it out. To build the two sides and the back of the box, I used additional pieces of Dollar Tree signs and then just glued them in place. I also added a bottom just with some hot glue. I used a half inch wooden square dowel to create a roof line and then I just cut it out with my miter shears. Using some hot glue, I just hot glued them right on the top peak of the house at the front. I gave the complete birdhouse and the box behind it a couple of coats of white chalk paint. Then once that was dry, I needed to add a little dowel for the perch for the birds. So I just cut off a little piece of quarter inch dowel and hot glued it into place. A little distressing with sandpaper and some greenery and this project is complete. For this project, I'm starting out with an artist panel that's solid wood. I stained the frame part here and the back so it would look finished. And now I'm just giving the inside a couple of coats of white chalk paint. 
This is a thrift store candlestick that I had previously painted black. It's glass underneath, but the chalk paint wasn't working very well. So I decided to give it a couple of coats of white flat spray paint and that worked much better. Now I'm going to take some of this bare antique decorative finish wax and a soft rag and give it a nice vintage antique look. I'm taking two larger tumbling tower blocks. These I pick up at my local Dollarama store. They're quite a bit bigger than the tumbling tower blocks you can get at Dollar Tree. I'm staining them the same color because I'm going to use these as a ledge on top of the candlestick to give the picture more support. Using my Cricut again, I cut out this little bloom decal and I think it's absolutely beautiful. I love the print. It's called September Twilight. That's the font I've been using and that was one that I purchased. Now I also grabbed one of the free Cricut printables, but this is something that I decided I was just going to hand paint right on top of my picture. I'm using a fine tip Sharpie marker and following along with this sweet little print and it turned out really beautiful. I distressed the candlestick with sandpaper and then gave it a clear coat. Using some white paint and what was left on this rough paintbrush, I gave the frame some distressing. And now I'm using Weld Bond glue, which is a really strong glue, similar to wood glue, but it's meant for all types of surfaces. I'm going to glue the two tumbling tower blocks together and then glue them right on top of the candlestick to use them as a platform for the frame. DIY number seven is using mostly Dollar Tree products. This is of course one of their signs. I'm gonna give it a couple of coats of white chalk paint. I also got some of these MDF letters, just the H, M, and E, so you can probably guess what I'm making next. Yes, it's a home sign, and I'm going to be making a wreath for the O. I'm just painting these with some black chalk paint, and then I'm going to distress them a little bit as well. Using a really old chip brush, I'm just going to dip it in some black chalk paint and drag it up and down the sign to give this some really good distressing. I really love the white and black together. Next, I'll just hot glue the letters right onto the sign. I grabbed a couple of these embroidery hoops from the dollar store. They are plastic, so I'm just going to wrap it up with some of the greenery tape from the Dollar Tree and then I'm going to use some lavender and boxwood and make a pretty little wreath to serve as the O. I wanted the wreath to be removable so I'm going to hot glue this command hook onto it and then I'll be able to remove the wreath for every season. This sign was really popular. I got three orders for it when I posted it on Facebook Marketplace. I'm just going to add a little bit of nautical rope as a decorative hanger and this one's ready to go. This DIY is super cute. I'm using some of these garden stakes that I pick up from Dollarama every year, and I'm just going to create a little picket fence crate. I've got it all assembled, and now I'm just going to take some of this gel stain in walnut and stain the whole thing. I did put a little popsicle stick as a brace on the very top, and that just will hold all of those taller pieces in place. I took a styrofoam ball, cut it in half, glued that down, and then added some moss and a few picks of lavender, and this one is finished. It 
If you love farmhouse decor as much as I do, then you're definitely in the right place. I'd love it if you would hit that subscribe button button and become part of my YouTube community. I've got tons of things in store for you in the next few months, so you might want to click on that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload something new. You won't want to miss it. Number five is a little similar to number six. I'm going to take some of these wedding signs from the Dollar Tree and make them into picket fence wood boxes. I'm going to cut one down about three inches shorter than the other one so I have two different sizes. I'm using some of the Dollar Tree planks that you can get in a set of six. These are the square ones. Now this one in particular is a little bit smaller but I do have some other ones and again just using my utility knife will give me all the cuts I need. I love using these planks because they're just so simple. You don't need to get any power tools out or anything other than a utility knife. I'm going to hot glue all the pieces together to create a box and then glue them onto the arrow. I painted them black first and now I'm giving them a couple of coats of white chalk paint because when I distress it I want some black to be showing through. I love to print on tissue paper. It allows me to get so many beautiful designs in black and white or color onto my projects. I cut out the little tissue paper and then use a small brush to apply Mod Podge to my project. Then I'm going to use my brush to pick up my tissue paper and that will allow me to place it where I need it to be. Then starting from the Inside, I work my way out with the brush, always making sure that my brush has a nice amount of Mod Podge on it and isn't dry. If you use a dry brush or a drier brush, it will rip the tissue paper and then you'll have to start over. Another tip I can give you is to pounce with your brush up and down like you see me doing here and that helps to get out any air bubbles and any wrinkles and just helps to blend that tissue paper right into your project. I'm going to use some coarse grit sandpaper to distress down to the black so you can see some of that coming through. I'm also going to use a dry brush with some black paint and just distress the whole box and the top of the picket fence. Then I'm going to go ahead and glue in some dry floral foam and add some floral and greeneries and this project is done and ready to be displayed. DIY number four is one of my favorites. It turned out super sweet. I'm using one of these Dollar Tree tins and some clay Martha Stewart vintage chalk paint and just a regular kitchen sponge to pounce on some texture onto this tin. Then using just some regular latex paint in a lighter shade and some baking soda, I'm going to mix this together and then use the same kitchen sponge to pounce it on again. And this is going to give me some wonderful texture that's almost going to look like stucco. Next, I'm going to go back to the clay chalk paint and the sponge brush and just dab it on and blend it through so it has a little bit more color and dimension. To camouflage the metal handles, I'm using some of this white nautical rope. I'm just going to wrap it around from one end all the way to the other and secure it with hot glue. I'm using the tissue paper method again for printing this little design that I created in Cricut Design Space. I'm going to go ahead and add it the same way I did the other one using some Mod Podge and then just very gently making sure that I use a brush to smooth it all out. I've got all of these designs available as free printables. You can access them on my website and I have the link down in my description box. 
They aren't available to download on an iPad. So if you want to download them, you'll need to be on a computer or a smartphone. And that's when you'll be able to download them. If you need help, please, by all means, comment down on this video. You can also send me a message through my website. This is the first time that I used white tissue paper on a colored background. So I just took this sponge and I had some of the paint left on it from before. I'm just dabbing around the edges of the tissue paper to camouflage it and make it blend in more with the tin. This is a little trick I like to do when I don't wanna have to fill a whole container with something at the bottom. I just cut out a piece of cardboard that will fit into the tin about an inch or two down from the top. And then I just put a bunch of hot glue on top of it and it usually stays in place quite nicely. I'm going to add some moss, some eggs and my sweet little bunny. And this one is complete. So this one is a little different. It's a thrift store flip. And this is one of the first ones that is in my top 10. So I have this chicken and pot and I just loved it when I saw it. I knew that it would look absolutely amazing, painted with more rustic colors into farmhouse decor. Now I did start painting it with white chalk paint, but I didn't like the effect that was getting. It was very streaky. So I did take it outside and I spray painted both of them with flat white paint. Now I'm taking a stiff brush and some eucalyptus color chalk paint from Martha Stewart and I'm just going to go ahead and really heavily dry brush the pot. I'm going to leave the chicken white and I think I really like it that way but you let me know if you would have done something a little bit different to the chicken. Using a second light green color called Antique Sky, also from Martha Stewart, I just painted the rim of it and then dry brushed a little bit of white on top. And I think the pot is really nice. I just love this green color for spring. I like to use these little styrofoam balls that you can get in different sizes at the Dollar Tree because sometimes I make little tiny things and then I have to cut up that floral foam and it makes a big mess. I'd much rather just pop in a little ping pong sized ball and then I can go ahead and stick all of my florals in. I'm using some dusty basil and some yellow lavender and this is absolutely gorgeous how it turned out. The second runner up are these sweet little birdhouses that I made using these Dollar Tree containers. I use 100% acetone just to remove all of the ink from them and it's really easy to remove. Then I'm going to be using some neutral colors to paint these little baby birdhouses. Aren't they the sweetest little things? I'm going to use a couple of different colors of gray and some beiges and you can use whatever colors you want but I just decided to make these more neutral than usual. The bases of these birdhouses are really thin and I wanted them to be a little bit more heavyweight. So I'm taking some of these Dollar Tree tumbling tower blocks and just gluing one on either end of the birdhouse. I needed to drill some holes into the corks and into the bottom of the birdhouses. So I'm using a quarter inch spade drill bit and just going ahead and doing that. It's very simple to use. I'm using some quarter inch wood dowels that I've cut in three different lengths and I'm going to glue one of them in each of the birdhouses. This will be my stick that I'll be able to push into the cork to finish these off. Using my Cricut again, I just cut out the words tweet, chirp and whistle and I'm going to apply those to the little white containers to make a sweet little birdhouse trio. 
I painted the dowels and the tops of the corks in coordinating colors and then assembled everything together. I really love these. I think they're probably one of my most favorite projects that I've ever come up with. So here's number one. This is the top choice of all of my spring DIYs. And you know what? You guys are right. This one turned out absolutely amazing. It was inspired by a Kirkland's piece and I decided to just take some of these tumbling tower blocks and build a little crate. Now, you know, you could probably use larger pieces of wood for this, but I wanted everyone to be able to have the opportunity to create something like this using something that you can easily find at your Dollar Tree. Now these blocks are a little bit bigger than what you would normally get at the Dollar Tree, but those would work just fine. Here's a look at the inspiration piece, and this is $35 on their website. Now I live in Canada, so there's no way I'd ever even be able to order something like this. So that's another reason why I love to create things because I can do it for so much less and I can take some inspiration and make it my own. It's going to get a coat of Maui Sand Chalk Paint by Folk Art. And then I'm going to finish off, to finish the assembly, I'm just going to add the top piece and then distress it with some lighter gray chalk paint and a little bit of white as well. To finish off, I'm going to add the milk bottles that have some twine wrapped around them and some lavender from the Dollar Tree. I'd like to thank all of my viewers and subscribers for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love for you to stick around. Hit that subscribe button. That black arrow will tell you exactly where to click. Have a wonderful Easter weekend, and I'll see you in the next one.